every Tuesday and every Thursday. Hey, Y'all hey, tap hey. In. is this thing on? Can you hear me? Roy is anybody out show? there? Mr. Spock the B, baby. Hey, tune in. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. And it's featuring the homie Big Hank. And Chris I'm the It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. And it's featuring. And Christina Carter It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast Everybody tune in, you dig it? It's funny as hell, my dude It's when we can kick it Every Tuesday Everything is going down Every there. Thursday They about to do the most It ain't a competition, it's a conversation, homie Yo On the weekends For an Anthony Every show Every Tuesday It's the week, homie the Every Anthony Thursday show. What you listening to? Tuesday. Uh, you know what, man? We're being comedian Roy Anthony. You know, I'm the number one headliner. With me living in Long Beach, all of my neighbors, all my friends, and stuff, they all respect me. They love me. The business point. You see, we're here on 4th Street, in downtown Long Beach, east side Long Beach area. Way you want to say it. and I just always feel free and stuff like how different people love me, love to talk about me, love how Roy Anthony is and stuff. So won't y'all come with me? My neighbors love me, man. All I mean, all the business owners is like, what's up, Angel? Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. You're in the bullshit again. Bullshit again. See you here again. Hey, man. Good. Matter of fact, I see one of my good neighbors now, dude. Yeah, Mr. Tommy. Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> Fuck with a motherfucker. Early in the morning, ain't had no pussy. Oh! Motherfucker. <laughs> Hola, mija. <laughs> What's up, big homie? What's up? That's my man Noodles. What's up, Noodles? Fuck you, Roy. <laughs> man, get out of here, man. <laughs> hey, y'all, welcome to the Roy Anthony Show. As you can see, that I have to be able to run my show and work at the same time and stuff. Don't worry about the cones or everything. You can see I'm a working man. I'm doing my comedy mobile units. You can call me for your parties or if you need plumbing issues or any type of fixtures. <laughs> what it do, what it do, what it do. What's up, Miss Joy? What it do, honey love? She can put sweet face. <laughs> All right. We be loving with Miss Joy. She be always like when she when she um talk to you, she like, hey, what's up there, sugar lips? <laughs> right. How you doing, honey? Oh, I'm doing great. How you doing? I see you got Cynthia Joy, aka S N N U. Yeah, I had to switch it up. I, okay. So okay. let me let me just let me uh, clarify that real quick. I yeah. had to let it be known on my show too, because nobody knew my name was Cynthia, and that's because oh, okay. for a long time I was kind of ashamed of that name because it represented my mother who died from drugs, and I had a lot of hatred from my childhood of the things that happened. So mm -hmm. I didn't really like to honor that name much. But as I grow and the more I learn and develop as an, a woman, I know yeah. what it means to go through things. And I realize I don't understand her story and what she'd been through. So I can't judge her actions because she had her mm -hmm. reasons. So mm -hmm. now I understand her on a different level. So now I honor my queen because without her, there'll be no me. So that's what Cynthia Joy that's is back hard. on the scene. Hey, that's right. That's right. Now, this picture, me and name Roy coming in the neighborhoods. Oh, my goodness. It seemed like everybody always had to have a run. Oh, Roy, my boy, play with toys. Don't be coy. Bro. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I was named my mother's um, uncle 
worked for Roy Rogers as a cow as one of his hands. So he he told Roy Rogers he was going to name his first son after me. He never had no kids. Okay. When my mother got pregnant with me, I was Roy when I was three months. Okay. You know, and so then growing up and stuff, Roy the cowboy and all that, you know. <laughs> but um, I want to tell everybody what to do, what to do, what to do. Welcome back to the Roy Anthony show. Um, we have our co-stars be coming in. We uh Cynthia Joy is already in the house. We'll let her be coming in. Big Hank always do something for the church and stuff because he's ours, and then he comes in and and then Christina Carter become popping in pretty soon. Um, I was going to, matter of fact, I'm glad Carl just jumped in. He said, what up, y'all? Actually, get to listen in today, working in the shop with my wrenches and hard hand, baby. Uh, wait, wait a minute, with my wrenches in hand, baby. That's how you said, <laughs> working with my wrenches in hand, baby. Let's go, Carl. Um, Good stuff. Say, oh, I'm trying to, um, I need to give him the invite. because I would like to see if he'll come in Thursday. And stuff because I I am going up there to see out. I may not be for that event, but I'm definitely going up there because I told I was telling Richie King that um I want to go if I don't make it to their event. I'm going sometime in August because I want to be at their podcast because I really um push the BB Nation. Um, they support what we do, and um I feel like I got extended family, so I um. Have definitely we've been trying to figure out how we can get to that one event, but it seemed like it may be if you don't there for the whole package. But I want to be with Carl Loomis. I want to meet him, J Dub. Um, 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 they got some more. So I just want to get the to really kick it with them. And my um childhood friend lives in Seattle. So they said when I come when I go up to Portland, then I'll probably travel up to Seattle and um come on down but anyway this is roy anti show this is part of the wo network which is it was created by my man richie king aka redneck pimp who celebrated their excuse me 20 year anniversary and i had the man of all times and i've been talking about that they was having this big party celebration that saturday this past saturday evening and it went it went across i heard that they had a good time I think you ever miss something that's in the that people call you back and like, hey, you know, man, we had a very good time, you know. But um Richard King, I want to give a shout out again to him, his beautiful wife for the 20 year anniversary, the co-creator Goose. Um, um, we got Blue Phoenix, who's our social producer, another warrior. Um, she has been in full remission of her cancer um she was stage four they gave her only so much time to live three years ago <laughs> you know what i'm saying and it's full remission me and big hank would be on here still praying you know we would be praying calling it out our other social producer athens and then we have our sponsor um matthew brooks then we have our good neighbors like i said the bb nation got the vrs it's a veteran syndicate that's around the u.s and um and then our true dear friends and family who listens in um carl said brother you got extended family up here brother you know what i'm saying i believe that for real and um i can't i look forward to seeing him and his babies kids love me for real i'm nothing but a big kid and but i'm you know it's innocent fun to play with the kids but i'm very protective over making sure I carry myself correctly. You know, you don't sit little kids on your lap. If you pick right. them up, you tell them, hey, you, what, you know what I'm saying? I don't let them, you know, I don't try to let my good be spoken evil of. And, um, but I really got so much stuff. I've been talking to, um, to Richie King and then to our team on the side about, I want to go up there and I'm going to kick it with them. I'm, if I had to be, I want to go to their podcast and kick it with them and stuff right and um and this is i've been feeling this i was telling richie and i know you think about it too joy that um i want to be able to wear like other people who who support us and tunes in even we had a studio i want to be able to go to their spot 
mm-hmm. and sit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get an Airbnb. I don't want nobody to get uncomfortable, have to get out their home. But I want, you know, I do want to do this and stuff. And uh, we got a video we're going to show. But we wait for everybody to get in. It was sent a video of a bishop that got robbed in New York while he was preaching and stuff, right? But well, why would he have a million dollars worth of jewelry on? <laughs> and, and so we're gonna show that video in today's subject, where it's talking about how many times do you supposed to turn your cheek? That's a real question. <laughs> That's the subject. How many times are you supposed to turn the other cheek? You I know, I think it's a number to it. I think it's a feeling because well, I think everybody yeah. can get pushed into a corner, and then they come out a different person once you push them into that corner. But and well, I, the, yeah, well, you're right. But I'm just saying, this word of God said, you know, if, if someone after you turn the other cheek, which well, he didn't touch a few people, huh? I said he didn't even smite at a few people who didn't get beside themselves. Well, you know what? I look at it like my grandmother said. I was a kid, and she was a pastor of the church I grew up in. I asked her one day. I said, hey, man, um, you was preaching because I got into it with this boy. Mm-hmm. And it was, the, it was the following after she had the sermon about turning the other cheek. You know, and as a kid receiving it, I'm like, okay. So the dude hit me. And I was like, well, I will not hit you back. <laughs> well, you all right? And he was like, bap, 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 bap. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like confused. <laughs> so I go to my grandmother. I said, hey, you was preaching about turn the other cheek. I said, but what if you turn the other cheek and they hit you into that one? She said, baby, that's when you ball your fists up in the name of Jesus and try to knock them out in the Holy Ghost <laughs> for real. So because turning one cheek is being rational but god didn't say be no fool exactly god done put my hands into some bruce lee times when i had to you feel me but he never told me to run so when i told her that and something i went to school that next day i was making cats turn their other cheeks <laughs> and stuff but in our society like the schools, they be trying to teach the kids, don't handle yourself. Go to a teacher. I had a principal come to me because my son got suspended for fighting. He was in he just started high school, ninth grade. And the guys came in there and I said, well, he said, well, the guy hit him and he started fighting him back and he got the best of him. I said, well, what's what he's supposed to do? He said, well, not at the school here. What we try to do is tell him to go tell the teacher. I said, man. <laughs> <laughs> what what neighborhood are you from? <laughs> right. One, we ain't gonna put that snitching moniker on from the beginning. <laughs> two, two, I've taught my kids if somebody hits you, you better hit them back. If, if if you can't get them with your hands and they coming at you, you better pick up a rock or a stick or use your belt. You know, you don't just let somebody just hit you and just say, oh, I'm gonna go tell the teacher. Uh oh, not he, he was about to get clowned at my home if he came home and said, Dad, this guy hit me, and and I went to the teacher and told him. I'd be like, hey, we're going to have a long talk. Come in. <laughs> you feel me? Right. Don't you teach your kids? The same concept. Don't be no fool. Don't let nobody abuse you, period. Right is right and wrong is wrong. You ain't just going to let nobody hit you. So always defend yourself. I teach them don't throw hands first, but definitely if you need to defend yourself, do so. So um, I teach them respect is earned, not just given. So anybody can't just talk to them any kind of way. Because even if you're an adult, you can't just come at my kids reckless and think that they're going to bow down to you. Of course, they're going to come to me. They ain't going to disrespect you. But they also ain't going to give you that utmost respect because that's not what you're giving to them. So, yeah. And that's interesting. You know, and I brought it up like this because we're talking about in our base home at first. Right. Even when we teach our kids, right? <laughs> How we teach our, our children, we teach them, you know, about how how to deal with that, which is turning the other cheek. But now it leads up to where, like, 
what happens when you leave out of your door? What well, you like, can't protect her from everything. We know that. And you know, you're gonna have situations when you leave out the door and mama ain't around to protect you. Yeah. So um you I teach them that everything don't deserve a reaction. Yeah. So some people, some things is just ignorant, and you gotta yeah. ignore it and turn them go the other way, completely go the other way. Don't even subject yourself to that type of energy. Look, so some things that you can not deal with, make that choice and don't deal with it. If you see as a group of niggas on the corner or whatever. Don't walk that way and anticipate nothing's going to happen if you know where you are. But where I live, we don't have that issue because there is no but situation. See, there's like a that. difference. See, now, Joy, you, it's a difference grew depending on where you, live at. You, you grew up in Chicago yep. where you knew how to, you know, what it took to survive. Well, you got right. Miss Willette. She's in the house. And so, <laughs> with you, Miss Willette Hurts. Miss <laughs> Hey, Sugarfoots. What's up, All sweet right. face? Hey, what we were just talking about with Let, it's good seeing you and stuff. Yes, um, you too, bro. She be saying that the light, your window is open in the back. That is not, it is, it is not, it's, it's cracked, but the light is is from. Oh, is that for real? She said that's not the light from the sun coming through her window. That's, that's, that's Jesus called, right there. That's called an anointing. Oh, okay. Tell them, Joy. Tell her, oh, I believe you. You don't have to miss me. I believe <laughs> you. And so, hey, Mark, we was bringing up though, um, before we go farther about turning the other cheek. How did you teach your kids at home about dealing with turning the other cheek, especially with the pressures before we go on? Me? Yes. Well, um, so I would tell my kids to turn the other cheeks but they work together so my oldest is 25 and my young my oldest my my youngest is 25 and my young my oldest is 28 so they will work together and and be con, um convinced to do some stuff like behind your back you know like if my son had trouble at school he would call his big sister and i'll be picking him up from school and then they have some plan, and then they go into the school and handle it. And I don't even know nothing about it. Well, so. <laughs> yeah. But you told them, you told them, see, we were just talking about that ourselves. And so we was just disclaiming about how we teach our children about, mm -hmm. you know, you know, when you're dealing with turning the other cheek, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when we deal with society, and, um, and not just our kids when they go into society, but ourselves. I remember when I was, you know, when I was younger, when I was a kid, somebody could say something and say something about my clothes or something like that. And it's going to trigger me to say something back and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So when when they say turn the other cheek, I was telling them how my grandmother had preached, you know, I got into it with a boy one time. And then it was like, hey, it, I said, well, if they hit you in your other cheek, and she said to ball your fists up and <laughs> in the name of Jesus and try to knock him out with the Holy Ghost. That's what she told me. Now, my question is, how do we do with that same thing in our society? Well, you in know, society, we, well, we older now. So the but, things that we were taught as a child Although it, it plays into us as adults, we get to make a choice what is worth it and what's not worth it. So you get to choose when you're going to turn the other cheek. And I think it depends on what, what's, being, what's happening, what's being addressed. Because things that's being said, we don't care about as much as we did when we were kids. Because we know that words have no power over us unless we give it to them. So that don't affect us like it would. You know what I mean? It won't affect us like it would if somebody's literally coming at you. And you, you ain't turning no other cheek. You about to knock the hell out of somebody because yeah. they're coming at you. I see so big it's hangs different, in the I think. Yeah. No, go ahead, Joy. I was Let hang through. Let them come through. Come on, yeah, big he's brother. Yeah, you trying to do some big hangs in brother. the house. <laughs> What's up with you, bro? How you doing? <laughs> good. Another What's happening, yo? What's baby? Got what it do, it honey, bro? bro? What's happening, baby girl? What's going on, man? I love y'all, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, big Hank, we've been on the subject about when do you, you know, about turning the other cheek. Now, before we go into the main subject of society, we I was asked each one, how did you teach your kids about turning the other cheek? Well, you know, 
No, because we didn't we didn't get that far in the Bible with my kids. We didn't get that to that part. <laughs> we didn't get to that part. We didn't get we still haven't got there yet to that part. We just now we just now we just now opened the book to that part right there. And my kids is grown. That kids is grown now. I I don't remember telling them to turn no cheeks when they was little. We were telling them to fire back. Yeah. Fire back. Hey, you know, just say that. Look, look. Hey, I said okay. the same thing. But one time, you know, my son, they had him held over at Camargo before they put him over to Polly. Yeah, it was an overflow. So right. he got into a fight with um, another boy. I'm not going to say, you know, with right. nationality, but you know how that goes over there. It so was Cabrillo. Yeah, it was at Cabrillo. Yeah. So he got into it. So the vice principal and them called me up and stuff, and they want to sh- talk to me about how I showing the video. Yeah. And so I said, well, how did it start? Right. He said, well, the boy hit him first. <laughs> and so I said, okay. And he said, well, we expect for our students or somebody to hit, to come tell the teacher. I said, man, not in my household, for one. <laughs> you do I do that my is. son, you ain't going to get no snitching tag on you as a youngster. Right. <laughs> Second, <laughs> I told him, I said, they have taught to defend themselves. If the guy's bigger and you can't get him with your hands, you better pick up a rock or a stick or you yeah. can build as nunchucks. I'm right. just, literally, I show him <laughs> for real. But matter, matter, matter of fact, don't get hit. Put your left hand up, block his right hand, catch him with your. <laughs> don't get really? hit. Yeah, don't get hit. Block that shit, man. Don't be letting niggas just walk up and steal on you. Yeah, Crazy. That part. Block that shit and come with the right. Nigga, don't be. Block. Nigga, do your yeah. shit. I that sound like me, bro. That's that Chicago. <laughs> yeah, that's you got that Chicago in the streets of Long Beach and all of y'all up in here. Hey, you heard me? Hey, we don't we start fights, but we finish them. We don't start them, <laughs> but we finish them. <laughs> but see, now we get that with our children, and this is us governing our kids. Now, how do we deal with this? When we coming into society, like man, I would um, tell anybody if you get a chance, you you know people have heard me discuss about what um, some of what our blacks went through after the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that's always befuddled me is that usually to conquer is to run stuff. Whoever conquers sets the rules. Mm-hmm. There's there's something that baffles me after the Civil War when it came to blacks. Like, why didn't we just say, hey, okay, we out of here. We helped you win your war. Let's get these ships. We out of here. Where was they going? Where were they going to go? Back to Africa. <laughs> they was never from Africa. I don't well, think. that's what I'm saying. So oh. somebody said, we're going to win this <laughs> war for you. And so Frederick Douglass came, he's an abolitionist, to Abraham Lincoln. He said, if we win this war for you, what we get in return. Right. Equal opportunity as an American. You get 40 acres in the mill. Right. Now that's what no, let's go there though. Let's yeah. get that well, out of the way. That's, that's, that's written down. That's written down somewhere. And they yeah. ain't did that. Yeah, they ain't and, did that one. And I, I like to tell people I cannot stand this information. One person to put it up stand in the pulpit or something and tell a lie and that lie will run and stuff. The the Civil War was never about slavery. Let's get that correct. It was about imports and exports from the South. The South was garnishing a lot of money with the cotton, with our harvesting of foods, and then we was they was bringing in trading from other com- countries. The South felt that Look, we making our own money. We set our rules and stuff like that. They they was calling the Northern Pansies. So the um the war started when slavery wasn't even involved with the war, with the Civil War. And the North was getting their butts kicked. Frederick Douglass say, Hey, I can help you win this war. But it's gonna take the entitlement of freeing the slaves. Abraham Lincoln wasn't really adaptive to freeing those slaves. He come up from them country t- spots himself. But he's looking bad. 
So he brings in and so the blacks. You've seen the movie Glory and stuff like that. So I've always been doing my research of what happened after the Civil War. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a movie I would tell everybody to watch that's the best signification of what happened after the Civil War. It was done by C.D. Portier, and it's called Buck and the Preacher. Buck and the Preacher, if you watch it as we are, as adults watch that right now, I would tell you all our neighbors, you watch Buck and the Preacher, and that's based off of true facts. That's, where one, of my favorite, that's one of my favorite movies, man. Yeah. These people was going to find them some land. They left slavery, and they was the people who ran the plantations was coming out and burning them up, burning their cover wagons up, shooting them, trying to make them feel discouraged on trying to go somewhere else and come back to working on that plantation for mm -hmm. free or mm -hmm. the amount. Because now the money system is going down because I've been in corporate, I worked, you know, corporate on most of my life. And and when the corporate heads don't get their certain amount, let's say for instance, you getting we get 10K a month from just being part of this board. If our money start coming down to like where they gave me an eighty five hundred dollars, you're like, hey, where's I'm about to get 10K? What's up with the mm -hmm. other fifteen hundred? Mm -hmm. They said, Well, we got some employees now. He's like, well, somebody's going to have to leave because I need my 10K. <laughs> That's how it does. So the corp so the plantation said we was making a lot of money without paying labor. We need to get them back. It's just like what happened with Amazon of today. They was mad that they came union. So, 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 what you saying? They reneged on the deal. They reneged on the deal. Okay. And, and so then I say to myself, <laughs> okay, now let's hey. come up to modern. Okay, the slavery ended in 1897. And that's the year that Texas, after three years, after Tex, um, Texas took three years before they to find out. So it really was it really was 1896, 1894. It really yeah. was 1894. Exactly. But they right. had found out in 1894, but they like, forget that. Forget <laughs> and all that. Yeah, we ain't listening to nobody. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, okay, let's push it all the way up now. Then the churches are established. There's churches I've seen, African Methodist, Methodist church established since 1905, 1910. Whoop de whoop de whoop. <laughs> it's a hundred and some years. And they ever did nothing. Ain't did nothing. Where's the infrastructures? Mm -hmm. You in the church, we in the going to mega churches while they complain about what the white folks done did. Where's the plan, dude? I blame the past hundred years on the black churches. If I tell you this, if St. Luke's Holy Baptist Church was established and had this type of monies, you don't think we have a company? Yeah. Big Hank is working for him. Yes, sir. And we working for him. Buy a house and stuff. You guys are a different breed of Christians, though. You guys are a totally different breed. I don't even look at it as a different breed of Christians. I look at it as a different breed of people who really believe in Christ compared Wait, to religion. Same thing. Same yeah. thing though. Christianity is not a religion. No. It's, it's a, a lifestyle. Yeah, religion is when you go going to just... And you ain't doing no power to like Second Timothy, the third chapter said, many are godly, but mm -hmm. have no power. No power. And that's what men wrong. run away from them. Yeah. God told us to be fishers of men. How can I relate with someone unless I tell them? This dude, this pastor one time back in the day, big Hank, he was living with his mother, but he had passed her to church. And he asked me why I can't, why I can't take his <laughs> leadership. I said, <laughs> you live at your mama's house. <laughs> I done been through the streets and been there beyond. <laughs> what you gonna teach me? What you got a church full of niggas that live at their mama's house? You got a church That's full hard. of niggas that live at their mama. Yeah. Because you can't man. go. Because you can't teach no higher than that. You can't That's go no higher. You can't teach me nothing higher than that, man. I, I, I don't believe it. I, I don't see it in you. I can't. Yeah. Goes so. back. They can. Right. They can. Right. We're they the type that we limited. What right. you say, Miss Willett? They were you limited, like he said, they he couldn't take you no higher than yeah. where he's been. 
Right. Yeah. I had to come down. Yeah. <laughs> other cheek. We, we got to turn the other cheek. But down. then we, what are we, insane? No. no. We turn the other cheeks every day, whether we believe it or not. I, 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 want, I want to say something about that, though. He, he did say just turn the other cheek. He didn't say turn another cheek and another cheek and another cheek. Right. One, you got one shot, nigga. You got one shot. If I get, and that's if I give it to you, you got one shot. That's the part. You saying that that's the part I'm saying. Okay, you got one shot. How many times over and over and over? We seem like I feel like after the Civil War, the Declaration of Independence should be rewrote. We're trying to hold something to be true, which is not true since 1776. It wasn't true when they wrote it. I don't want the 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 cats that, and I feel like um, our government is not um, what they call transparent. I think lawyers should be just like what we need for legal stuff. Write up what I'm trying to say and put it in that legal therefore and wherewith and all that stuff. That's what we're good for. Setting up our laws, sitting back and they don't follow the laws themselves. I'm looking at um, what's her name? Nancy Pelosi. Her her husband constantly doing drunk situations. It ain't mm -hmm. the first time. How you want to help America? You can't help your own household. And, and and listen, man. You, I know you're talking about the government, man, but the, but the they set the government up so that they can win. They didn't set it up so we can win. <laughs> they didn't set the government uh, up. So they set, they up set they the government win. up so when they mess up, they still can win. And that's how it is. If like that'll be just like if me and you and us, us four set up a, a government right now, we'll set it up towards the stuff that we like. You know how we get yeah. out. And, and, and we so, try to be where we're. You were right. <laughs> try to be had. right. We got to be where it's not biased. Right. It's not yeah. just for us. Look at me throwing some words. I <laughs> threw a word you in. Did, you did that. You did that. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I jumped on you with that. I jumped on you with that. I think you kind of can't be biased. Yeah. I, thought you, I thought you almost said you can't be bypassed. I almost thought you said that. I was like, I was going to get you. I was going to get you. My words are correct when I'm around I'm the game. Get you the USC alumnus, he and, knows his words. And, and so and so Roy, listen, just one last thing. They got the lawyers, to, they got the lawyers to change it, but the lawyers is on their side too. That's so they got so they, they, they ain't they, 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 they they most of the right. Senate is is lawyered up, right? Plenty. It's, yeah. it's me. Plenty. It's when mm -hmm. like I sent out a little thing on Messenger, and it was funny. Uh, and it was talking about former President Donald Trump and the coup. Well, well some people Come is on, trying man. to say that it was fake. It was no fake. I got somebody who was right on hand there. They went and they didn't even go in the yard part. They just went and they said it was not fake. No, it wasn't fake. But no, it wasn't some fake. people, I don't know why people think that the government, no matter if it's Republican or Democrat, because I'm free America. I'm not neither one of them. I can be swayed. That means I vote for what I think is good, not just for me, but for the rest of for the country. Yes, yeah, sir. The, the thing is, is that this whole thing's a mess. Yeah. I wouldn't have voted for, I, like, when 2016, I didn't vote for Hillary or Donald Trump. I wrote in Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders, to me, is the states are doing what Bernie Sanders is one who compelled about making it legal as far as marijuana. States are making money off of marijuana. Mm -hmm. They're helping with jobs like the state of Washington. I love what they do. They take their money and actually help you get a home. Mm. They actually help you get some stuff started, right? Mm. But one, I want to tell everybody who's listening, stop talking to me about politics. I'm not a, I'm not a president Donald Trump fan. I'm not uh, a fan of President Barack Obama. I'm not a fan of none of that. <laughs> not did y'all see for real? I'm not. You can did see. Can did y'all see? Oh, he gave health care. He was the first black. <laughs> okay, didn't have nothing to do with me. For real, <laughs> the bill out stuff. 
if, if we had a company and it goes down, what, what I'm going to bail it out for? Hey, did you see Donald Trump trying not to say the words that they was trying to give him to say when he was supposed to do the speech? <laughs> he said, he's, he's so retarded. They were saying, uh, and so uh, it's, it's the, 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 the voting is over. The voting is over and the, the presidential election is over. He said, no, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that it's over. I just want to say that. that they. <laughs> yeah. You can't control that. him. Look, I don't know him. why they think I don't care about none of that. Let me tell you something. I don't see why our country, which is based <laughs> off of our generation, this whole America now is based off of what generation X. It wasn't the Lehman Beaver people that came up with the cell phones, the the freedom of no. expression of mail, emails no. now. I don't even think the last time I bought a stamp. <laughs> I no. We it's came so, up, our, our generation came up with that big ass computer. What was that big ass <laughs> Xerox yeah. computer? We, yeah, but we, we, we started we with doing, We were doing this. We were doing yeah. this. I remember they showed it. Hey, some people still do it. Yeah. And see, what I'm saying is look, 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 all of a sudden, we supposed to give, we give respect with everybody else. I like this dude. But we don't give respect was, for ourselves. Yeah. But there was a guy in Michigan, Mr. Willett, and the guy was. <laughs> Um, he was talking about how when President Barack Obama got elected, he said, man, it was like going to the beach. He said, next thing you know, it was eight years. We have more blacks going to prison in them eight years. You can look it up yourself. I dug it up. You know, I'm a researcher. Between his era of presidency and through Bill Clinton's presidency, we have more blacks going to prison than any time. In former President Barack Obama's term, um, they start sending guys with misdemeanors to prison. Mm -hmm. Now, when the vice president now, I've been having some problem with Kamala Harris since 2009 when Oscar Grant got shot at the Fruitville Station and she didn't want to persecute prosecute the guy she sent him down to la and then when a cop slapped her at the court she didn't press no charges that's when the a the aclu got mad at her then i look at former president um i don't look at the taxes i look at president joe biden who was the actual architect for the crime law the crime bill look they said this is how we're going to fight crime. If you got just a smidgen of dope on, you going to prison. They didn't do that with um, my man who plays Iron Man and in, 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 um, Sherlock Holmes. He got Joe caught Biden. in my apartment with seven Joe and a half. Um, um, <laughs> what's his name? Robert Downey Jr. No, I'm they didn't do that. Long they long didn't do that. They didn't do it with Mark. They didn't do it with Mark Sheen. None of them cats. Uh, uh, yeah. Joe Biden, Joe Biden's son, always keep him some cocaine on him. You could catch him right now. He got some cocaine on him. Yeah, look, look, they had Robert Downey Jr. I was in an apartment in Long Beach. It was all this noise and activity, right? It was like he done fell asleep in the alleyway in his car with like seven and a half grams of crack on his lap. They took him to, to first thing they take him to Betty Ford. Because first thing we were saying, oh, he going to prison. Yeah, it's a they rap. Know, they got him. They Iron got, Man. They got him. They look at what they did when they so when they caught him. They swept them little drugs up in their little bag, put it away. Come on, Robert, get up, man, get up, man. man. They, we got, got, in the hospital. They, they got the best. That's it's why they call White House. That's their friend, man. That's Officer Timpson to them. Listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> to one, us. Of our, one, of our guys, one of our guys said that um, we don't cooperate <laughs> with the police. I tell I want anybody who's, who's white, my neighbors, <laughs> please. That we are um, instigating the police because I'm going to let you know when the police stops us, everybody in my car has always been attentive. We like, okay, because we don't know how this is going to go. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> And don't and don't and don't throw nothing under my seat. Don't throw nothing don't under throw my seat. Up, don't make no movement. <laughs> don't throw nothing under my when seat. Please come. I have my hands hanging out, <laughs> out the window. Look, so hanging out the window, and I'm. You want to retrieve your license, dude? My license number is this and that. Run it through. 
and stuff because I don't trust you. But some of my neighbors think that the 600 unarmed murders has occurred from basic traffic stops since 2017 is all those people's fault. No. 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 But we turn the other cheek. We turn the other cheek when we shouldn't be turning the other cheek. I was going to say, people, people turn the other cheek when, when it don't apply to them. When it don't hit their doorstep. When it don't apply to them, they could turn the other cheek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when it hit home, in, in, but to be in, honest, I can't even stun about it. I can't expect nobody else to treat us no different when we don't treat we each don't other. Treat no ourselves. Now I'm gonna get yeah. to that's that. Just part. That's why I said it first starts with us. who's the leader of ourselves. Yeah. Okay, as individually, it's four in responsible individuals right here on this podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. wait, a minute, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Since nobody think I'm playing, I'm gonna share something with you. I'm glad you came in, Hank. And so, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta share this with you. Come on, let's go for real. Um, we waited for you to come in. Hank, be ready. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on, man. I'm on. <laughs> Why he doing okay. that, Hank? I saw your video. I loved it. The Jesus real video. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, that's where man, I'm at with my shirt. You got on. That's how far I done came. You know what I mean? And you brought me through a whole lot. And I know it can't be nobody but him. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have did it. I could have did it. I couldn't have, I couldn't have put me where I'm at right now. No way. No way I could do that. No way. Hey, I want to add this. I want y'all to check this, check this out a little sit. Watch this, man. A Brooklyn bishop was robbed at gunpoint in the middle of his Sunday sermon today, and it was all caught on camera. The service was being live streamed this morning when he says three to four men walked in with guns. He spoke at length with CBS 2's Lisa Rosner about why he believes he was targeted and his message for the suspects. Five to ten minutes into preaching Sunday morning on Remsen Avenue in Canarsie, Bishop Lamar Whitehead saw the door in the back of the room kick open. How many of you? have lost your faith because you saw somebody else die what you're about to go through yo yo all right all right all right i've seen three to four men come in that's all right all right it's pretty much stating that i don't want i'm not going to do anything right because i know y'all coming for me y'all coming straight to me i don't want my parishioners hurt right i got uh women and children there as i got down one went to my wife and took all her jewelry and um, and had the gun in front of my eight-month-old baby's face. Um, took off my bishop's ring, my um, my wedding band, and took off my bishop's chain, and then I had chains underneath my robe. Um, and um, he started tapping my neck to see if anything else. So that means they knew. They, they, they watched, watched and they knew, knew that I had other jury. The church's, the church's live stream shows, shows the gun being held on the pastor. They had the guns on the on my deacons that was at the door. Whitehead says what you don't see on camera are around 100 congregants who are in the room. Men, women, and children drop to the floor in silence. My church is traumatized. The women and children are still crying. Still crying. Babies are still crying. Police say the men took off in a white Mercedes. Whitehead says cops have a license plate and witnesses saw the men change clothes outside. These men, they need to turn themselves in. I forgive you and I'm praying for you, you know, and I hope that God deliver you from the mindset of who you are at this time. Whitehead believes his family was targeted because of the publicity he received when he helped turn in the suspect wanted in the fatal subway shooting of 48 year old Daniel Enriquez in May. I turned them in, but the media called me the bling bling bishop. They had my Rolls Royce car all over everywhere. And I feel that that played the part in this. I think all pastors should be uh, be able to get permits for pistols. The NYPD is <laughs> investigating and Whitehead says the mayor and top police brass have called him pledging support to find the suspects. Fortunately, no one was hurt. In Canarsie, Brooklyn, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. In a statement, a spokesperson for Mayor Adams said, quote, no one in this city should be the victim of an armed robbery, let alone our faith leaders and uh, um, worshiping in a house of God. The NYPD is investigating this crime. Oh, I bling, um, the bling, the bling, um, bling pastor, huh? Yeah, the, the bling, 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 b
I mean, and it shouldn't happen, but come on, man, you can't be walking around and on on uh on live streaming with all this gold and all this and you and you pulling up in Rolls Royce. What you think gonna happen, man? Come on, man. Look, he's out here starving now. Is it right? No, not at all. It's not, not at, at all. all. But you know, it against me when I heard him say he getting his Rolls Royce and all that. You you you're going through the neighborhoods. Right. It looked like Bro, it was poor folks around them. And you're the only one shining. You're the only one shining. See, I think about like what um, Attila the Hun told that one village. He, the, um, they was going to, um, Attila the Hun would tackle villages that was that would be pros persecuting their own villagers. Mm -hmm. And this one village, Attila the Hun heard of, and he got there and the um, leader of the village was like, hey, in the name of God, please spare us. And he said, how do you know I'm not the vengeance of God? I'm not the, 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 the wrath of God. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't so. Mm -hmm. You see, I look at it like, um, here's a hundred parishers. Somebody in that church knew. <laughs> That's the first lady. Somebody knew who his wife was. It looks staged, though. It looked too staged. How was he looking the way he was there on the ground, but the person in the back wasn't scared, wasn't moving, wasn't doing nothing. It looked like it was staged. Mm. But they what gets me is that you done got all the publicity. You turned in the guy for the subway shoot. Now you sit up here and you probably walk around like like I was looking at him. It remind me of Rogers from um uh, Roger from What's Happening. Yeah, he did. Right, yeah, you know, you D, you know, but um, it, it to me, for one, is why are you wearing all this gold and your woman got all these diamonds and everything? And everybody they didn't rob nobody else in the church, a million dollars worth of jewelry on your neck to go come to on, church. Man. a million dollars worth of jewelry. God has been so yeah, real talk. Why you even possess that kind of money if you're supposed to be out helping the people? Why you got well, that kind of money? Well, you know, I tell it's hard to be where we tell people with bank like a rapper or something, you become wealthy. You can't go back to your old neighborhood. Only way you're going to be able to help anybody, uh oh, only way you're going to be able to help somebody. Is bring them like minded. I can't go back. I'm not saying I can't go to the neighborhood, but it's nothing that's attracting me there because I work myself to get up out of the neighborhood. Sometimes we want to get it back in the bucket and try to push people up, but you got to be on a ledge and be safe for yourself and try to pull people. Ooh, up. Ooh, the Lord ain't ooh. never told you to push no one. He ooh. said, pull ooh. them. And that's that, and that's the only them the only ones you the ones when you pulling them the only ones that want them the ones that want help because they reaching up for yeah. help. There you go. So they want some help. So that's how you that's how you do that. You might be pushing somebody that's that's trying to stay they down. Yeah, they ain't trying. They ain't trying to go nowhere. So they ain't God said, turn yourself. You. What the guy say? Hey, turn yourself in. But I forgave you. <laughs> if you forgave me, you don't have to worry about me turning myself. <laughs> 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 I'm about to start this business. What should have been done? You got a million dollars on your on your neck, but on no your company neck. Start. No, That's no ridiculous. company. Start. That's ridiculous. But what this about the people me. that's in church? What about you know, your listeners? What you you know people in your in your thing that are starving, um, don't have to, to live and stuff, and then you come to service and you get their tithes and offering. And then you want to come and believe me with you and your wife? That's that's totally. Isn't it, hey, look, isn't it one? Of them, he's like, hey, <laughs> I got the million dollars in chain. Let me show you what God is doing for me. If you ain't wearing all these chains, you not he ain't doing it for you. You need yeah. to get like me. And, and, so, and, and, and I'm gonna say this, man. God is in is, is in control of everything, and so a lot of times you reap what you sow. You know, look at the, yeah. think about it though. They try to make us always look at slavery. But who's been taking monies and making monies off your back without the having church. to pay anything? The church. They got $7.3 billion two years ago. Did you have any church members call you and say, hey, we miss you? 
<laughs> they got this 7.3 billion dollars I, I i keep asking why some people had well they gotta pay their people who work in the church how did they get by before ain't nobody told you to be in here every day you better get your job and then come by 7.3 billion dollars of taxpayers monies well it gets me i just okay i got my check stub friday I said, why is the government taking all this money from me? When you sit up here and Ukraine gets $500 million in cash with nobody who to authorize it right. What they need the money for, they run it over this way. Mm-hmm. Why are we giving them more money? Is that why we're looking for Hunter Biden's laptop? Because he's been over there with them illegal trades. Why we don't ever call out this? Because guess what, y'all? Turning the other cheek is when we didn't say nothing. Mm-hmm. It would bother me as I, I told somebody. They was like, "Oh, we going to protest about it. Um, Mr. You know, George, Mr. George Floyd." <laughs> it was very bad that he went through that. You know, for real. But I seen the same scenarios right there on my street, and we we bypassed that to go to a major one that you didn't even know the person to yeah. protest. Yeah. How many people you seen to get arrested and we didn't stop at one time? Yeah. I done said something to this guy. I was like, man, what did he do? And the police told me, hey, back up before we arrest you for invading and messing with yeah. police yeah. activities. When did that become they, a law? They, they, if it wasn't a law, they was going to make one that day just for exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, just because you were there, they were yeah. going to go make one right now. For real. That's what they will do. Stop the police here. Stop me and my partner. talking about it. It was two guys supposed to be bald here. I said, they said it was two black guys bald here. <laughs> Listen, man. So one of the they, homies was walking down the street. He said, man, man, Roy is a good people. Man, Roy had some money. You know what they did to him? They put him in handcuffs up there obstructing police business. Come on, well, man. Justice. But but guess what? So all of a sudden we started beating them up. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's all on the news. Oh, they terrorized the police. I, man, let me tell you something. Let me let me say this again. Despite Thomas Jefferson, he made quotes. One, if this, if, if this government fails us, that's in the Declaration of Independence. Two, tyranny. If you fear the government, that is considered tyranny. If you if the government fears you, that's called liberation. Some people wave it off like this. Oh man, don't pay attention to that. Mm. I, my, my uncles and them was true Black Panthers. They was in they they took over the Compton. You know what's got me is when I seen the veterans who go over there and they they go on to fight not knowing if they're going to return back with their life. But yeah, we got, I, I know guys who's tough in the streets. They, this is my neighborhood. They claim and whatever. But as soon as something goes down, I've seen two cops rusting up a dude and everybody was in a big old group and they were scared to go fight for that dude. I ain't telling nobody put their lives on the line. But one of the things I can't stand is when we get the public, when they put the Black Lives Matter, the 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 the, the analogy was understanding because all these young folks, like when the young dude down in Florida, business dad walking with some Skittles, he gets shot for what reason? So we turn to say Black Lives Matter. All lives matters, but this, but then these they take the ones who come up with it, take it, and, and they, they, they bought nine point six million they dollars. Money. How does that help? You, we don't feel no justification unless Benjamin Crump shows up. Mr. Al Sharpton's getting the elderly. Used to be with him. Now we see Benjamin Crump, and he's like, oh, and his caseload is deep. I checked him out. I went to look him up. Benjamin Crump is. His caseload is deep. 
if you in a state and he's not legal there, he's going to file his law stuff and pass whatever works so he can just come help. And I'm like, why that one person? We got more millionaires and billionaires in the. Okay, I'm not on my whites. I constantly got to bring it back home, just like we was talking about our kids. Mm -hmm. In this, in our society, in the past ten years, we got more blacks that are millionaires and billionaires than all the history of the U.S. But yet, blacks are still the low-income form in America. How is that? Everybody for themselves. They've been there. You go to only take care of myself. I'm only looking out for my people. And that means in their family, so it don't generate to the other families that actually need your help. And that's the problem with people. He said, you like Cletus Clump laughing like, brother, this BM deal is so twisted compared to what it was when the movement started. See, he, Carl Lewis right. See, it was just another propaganda of, of something that they could make funds with. And I do like when they use people's lives to make a profit. You work on someone's sympathy yep. to get profit. To get paid. And that ain't nothing new, yo. That ain't you got people out saying. here holding BML, BLM, going to jail and stuff like that, and you buy a $9.6 million house. Right. <sighs> It made it now say they made it sound oh that's bad i'm gonna tell you something i learned if y'all can watch richie king's show today i was watching the show last week and they explained about the roe versus wade the abortion thing and Rhett, he told that he said it was some big fat some fat white woman who tried to say some black dude raped her and he said, ain't no black dude mess with her. <laughs> and she found that she wasn't even pregnant. But just to know that, you know, in that time of society, there used to be a time when some white women would yell out, this black man raped me and he was getting killed. You ever seen the movie In the Heat of the Night? Yeah. They don't even want to rationalize with you. Um, I, you were speaking on the BLM deal, but that's just that just uh, confirms what 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 I was talking about is how they got the the, the laws and the rules and the regulations set up, so, you know, so that they can win. We no no way we would even if we would have came up with the BLM deal, we wouldn't have went and got now nah, we would have known this stack up nine point six, put it in some kind of form and. What are those uh those uh nonprofit deals and yeah. all? You know what I mean? Come on, man. We don't know all that. At least not yet. I don't know I all that kind of stuff. Nonprofit that you don't supposed to be making a profit. You wow. know, <laughs> I don't understand you pay your Edison bill, but what you doing <laughs> a new car? Just, Come, on, the Come on, man. Come on. That part. <laughs> Come the churches is doing that. We taking money for a hundred years, and we sitting up here. What? I was right across the street. I used to be over in South Central. Um, man, I look, I like money. I don't love money. I like enough where I can pay my stuff and do the things I want to do. The love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. Some people believe in the church that if you have a lot of money, that's that's a lie. How can we be make up 13.5% of the US and we sit up here and we got we got Ice Cube, we got Snoop, we got LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, we got the football players, all this. How in the world do we have all this and you tell me that we are still the lower income of any of the races? I'm paying all this money. Some lady, oh, I paid $150 to go see T.D. James. Why? Why would I pay that? Oh, but I'm the wrong one. When we're, we, I seen the churches that went to go honor a man who wore a dress. When I was a kid, that seemed like he used to be frowned upon. We don't even want to call the man by his name, Mr. Tyler Perry. We want to say Medea. Right. Got church people talking about that. I never heard Medea quote the scriptures correct. Right. I feel it's a character. But look how God blessed him. Blessed with what? 
the money that's that's part of his destiny it doesn't make me hey big hank you want to be a millionaire you know they got where you dress dress you don't have big hank with a big old dress and the big old <laughs> Yeah, Look at his facial cool. expression. We're about to make a billion dollars, Hank. We just need you to wear a big old dress with big old boobies. I see it in you. You got to wear some of them old nursing shoes. So I've been doing look, I've been doing comedy since 2013, and I see a lot of cats that do the, the little gay jokes and be all snapping their fingers. I still haven't done that one yet. I still that, haven't done a, a hey, I still ain't none of did none I of that. I can't see shit. you over there like it. It feels like it. It'll be like, it'll be like, it'll be like, it'll be like, your big, your big ass, your big gay ass that wear a size 13 shoe, big funny hand long. I couldn't even do it. But hey, I can't even know. I can't. <laughs> hey, man, that was just brother, though. He was joking, man. I was like, no. Um, um, I mean, his name was Roselle or, Roselle or something. Man, this joke was. I mean, he like Kimbo Slice. He was big, like, <laughs> and he was like this. Hi, Roy. Oh, <laughs> He's like, like, okay. <laughs> we used to work together. So I had to pick up these strawberries. They were like 100 pounds in the thing. And I was struggling with one of them, trying to get it. He was like, let me help you. I picked them up. He's like, there we go. And I was like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> But Strong ass minute. man, girl. <laughs> but wait a minute. But that's what the churches did. How is it that um I was remember how we was talking about? I'm gonna ask this question. Big Hank, Joy, Mrs. Whitt, when's the last time you bought a rap album? It's been a long time, man. But I listen to rap. I listen I mean, to rap. Listen, I'm talking about you no. went and bought an album. You ain't got to. You ain't, you ain't got to now. You could just get on the internet and play it. You ain't got to yeah, have it. You ain't got to have it. YouTube and all that, did you ever in the 90s? Yeah, yeah. 96, I don't know. Albums played. I used to buy the cassettes, though. I bought a bunch of cassettes, though. I had all the that. CDs. I'm talking about all the CDs. CDs. I'm just saying. CDs. Yeah, I had a CD. You know, a bunch of CDs. I bought bootlegs. I never really bought the... I, I, think I tried. To, I bought a lot of bootlegs, but the cats who I like, like the Tupacs and the Biggies, I used to buy the real deal, so I could, you know, had a real deal. See, you exceptional. I think the last yeah. album I bought was Dre 2001, and um, other than that, I don't think we have made rappers rich. I was listening to this dude's video. No, we definitely the white guys' videos. The wisest one who makes the rappers rich and yeah then, that's true i'm gonna show that video thursday the guy breaks it down he's a white guy and he said man i would we would buy the music because it's talking about them murder 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 he said that they would play the music be bumping it until they come up to an intersection and see some other blacks so they had turned the music down because they said they know that them blacks is about that life for real well, well, they'll tell you, they'll tell you, even the, even, the, uh, even the artists will tell you that they don't really get no money until you cross over. That's when you get your bread. When you cross, when the white people start listening to you, that's when Snoop and all and Ice Cube, that's when they start getting their bread. Yeah, that's yeah, nice. but some of other ones, like, I didn't know nothing about this dude, 69, whatever, what's his name? Um, who had, yeah, that nine dude, nine or whatever. He had his hair all colorful, and it was supposed to be all this blood thing. And I was like, "Who is the yeah. dude? I never heard the songs." He was he was a pretender. He was a pretender. He still is a pretender. He ain't really no no gangster gangster. He told he told on all, he told on all them niggas. You hear me? They say we finna give yeah. you some time. He's like, "No, nah, man, Killer Mac and 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 Doody Do <laughs> and, and Gangster Bim and Little Lamb Lamb. All them niggas. They did Little Lamb Lamb. Yeah, all lamb, them niggas did it. All little, them niggas did Harry, Little Lamb. <laughs> nigga told on everybody. <laughs> big Boo Boo, Big Boo Boo. All them niggas. They did it. Wasn't me. I yeah. wasn't the one. He no, told no, them no. All. And the thing is. We, I, we constantly looking at, oh, look what they doing. Look what the whites did to us. Look, I'm looking at, man, even in my neighborhood, when that crack came out, I seen true colors. I seen guys turn their family members into crackheads. Mm. Now we back to, okay, let's say we back to the 70s 
time when Hollywood was making, we was making all the black exploitation movies. Explo exploitation movies. No, they called it black exploitations. Black exploitations. That's what they yeah, call it. The '70s, where you know Cotton comes to Harlem and the Watermelon Man. They called it. I remember all that. I remember all that. Now, now, like BET is ran by Viacom. It, and so we, we it's, uh, people don't understand why I'm saying this about turning the other cheek. It seems like we have a naturalness of, of turning it. our other cheek. We got souls to love with God, but we scared to die. My mother raised me that she said, if you want to die for anything, die for the truth. Man, stand up for something, man. Stand up for something. Yeah, that's where we went. Many times I was in the streets, running with the devil. I, I, I didn't have, I, I, you know, I couldn't go past the police without looking over my shoulder and trying to hit another corner or something. Now, call a rearview, call a rearview mirror driving. And that's how we used to drive. We'd be looking up in the rearview mirror the whole time. Don't even look time. straight. <laughs> you could be looking in the rearview mirror the whole time, driving that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rearview mirror drive. And, and and so then I'm like, okay, hey. We got city commissioners that can. We did a, a thing on our show about charters. You uh, sometimes we are fighting with the wrong people. Sometimes the police officers are really just puppets. They really don't even know the laws themselves. There's no way you can know the laws where a lawyer takes 12 years of knowing the law and crossing the bar that deal with law compared to someone who just did four to six months of training and he's supposed to uphold the same law. We the, the, um, They get away because we, the city commissions and them don't want to change the charters. That's why they can beat you around and say he was resisting me. But you know what? I, it, it, it gets to a point where I'll be asking everyone, when do we stop turning the other cheek? And we gotta address the people. We never want to address the ones who's right in our face. <coughs> the ministers, the people who's, who's running the show. I um I was telling some people big Hank that the Lord keeps showing me that he said, I'm about I'm enriching you. And some people's gonna come and thinking that they're gonna be able to, hey brother, I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna tell man, I don't want to hear. What you been doing before you heard about yeah. what we doing? Right. <laughs> let's keep let's let's keep it like it was. That's what you yeah. got. You got to say. Let's keep it like okay. it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna shock everybody. See what a lot of people don't know is that I got accepted in 2017 to Hollywood, um, um, Columbia College, Hollywood, just ran by Hollywood executives to be a, a real bona fide. I'm using that word became a real bona fide <laughs> Hollywood producer. Real now, bona fide that, Hollywood that, producer. Everybody shoots movies and stuff on YouTube and all that, but Hollywood and brought me in because I had been producing shows. So I got off of it. I have a year, a semester and a half to get my BA degree. And then Hollywood will help. So I told them my scripts and everything. So the quarantine hit, money's going down low. And I was just letting everyone know that I'm about to go back and finish this up the schooling because me and Big Hank, we got some ideas and we going and I want to make sure, look, Paramount even said, you know, if once you do that, we give you a first budget of anything you want to do. Oh, for real. They give me the budget to shoot some fish. Right. So I'm doing this. Now, my thing is, why isn't it that, you know, I, I don't knock a celebrity or something, especially in the blacks that wants to help the kids. But sometimes you can help the parents and the parents gonna help the kids. Help me with a job, pay for the junior college. This should be where we got enough um, rich celebrities that any black in a certain school should be able to get free education. Women are doing it. These women are doing it. They raising kids and becoming the degrees. I'm like, okay, homie say, I wanna be a rapper. I see more brothers playing the PlayStation games and instead of coming up with their own game, Let's correct the game. Let's correct the system. 
but your son is created. Is it your son that's created the game, or it was uh, Christina's son? That was Christina's yeah. son. Yeah. Hey, y'all, I just want to bring this up. This is our last week on Facebook. We will Gosh. not be coming live through Facebook no more, man. They give us problems. Look, we um, they won't even give us all our views. Um, Richie, um, King, Richie King had someone else to produce the show, one of the shows, and it had showed all the viewers. It's something about whoa, and Facebook don't like us at all. They shadow brand um, our shows. They even had the nerves to take off our old shows. Then people try to get in. You got to be all this and that. You go on YouTube and type in as long as you got a thing. You feel me? And we're coming live. So Thursday is our last show on the YouTube platform. And I was glad. I'm tired of dealing with matter. For real. People mm. scared to say something. Mark Zuckerberg, man, I ain't giving no credence to no Mark Zuckerberg. I ain't giving no credence to no governments and stuff. Jesus said, whatever renders Caesar, give unto Caesar. I give the government their money because that's their images on it. Other than that, I'm not tripping on none of them cats. It seems like they do the same argument over and over. Then we got somebody coming to the church. Hey, we got, I don't even know why we vote Democrat. We don't know Democrats have got us out. No. And then when I ask this question, what's the difference between a Democrat and Republican? Well, what's the difference between a Democrat and Republican? One goes for money, one goes for helping the poor. They all go for the money. They all go for the money. You, the difference is that, and I dug this up, and I was shocked. If you by today's subject, we ain't gonna be on too no long. We about to get off here, but I was shocked. Guess why? Why? Republicans believe that God should be in politics. Democrats feel like it should be socialist. But if you look at the way things act. Yeah, that was back. That was back when it first started. They, 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 they corrupted. They corrupted, homie. They didn't got corrupted because they, they, they put Donald Trump. When they put Donald Trump up holding the Bible upside down, you know they corrupted and hitting all the other people on the background. Come but on, see, man. some people ignore all of that because they look at tax breaks. Yeah, I'm about humanitarian. God told me. Um, David said through the word of God, I was young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. Mm -hmm. So why am I worried about a tax break if I ain't even in that tax bracket? Right. One man can't help my household except myself. We have been through, I've been through all types of presences. You know, there's one president that I really like that's going to shock a lot of people. And it's what he did at the end messed it up. Man, I love me George W. Bush. <laughs> Junior, to say for real, you know why? Man, I made I was making money. I wasn't going to jail. He was like, get the hard clubs. George W. Bush, he messed up when he went to go after a rock. No, but who was complaining about George W. Bush? He was a Republican president. Mm -hmm. For real. If you look back at it and stuff. Man, one time this black guy told me, he said, man, you know, the first real black president was George, was um, Clinton. Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. I said, what? He's from, isn't, you mean a guy from Arkansas? Yeah, well, hey, man, you out your, out your mind, man. The <laughs> best, I don't know who's black or whatever. Because they always just, if you just got an ounce of black, uh, Kamala Harris just now considering herself black when in, Back in the day, she was Eastern Indian Hindu. That's what she was claiming herself. She was sending all them black guys to prison. <laughs> For real. So yeah. I, I want to pick this back up too, man, Thursday, about turning the other cheek. That's something that we think about because we 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 do a lot of of um talking and never the actions. I know Big Hank is acting. Oh man, I want to give an announcement. I paid my tithes today. <laughs> yes, sir. I did. <laughs> I followed through. I, I was the first thing I wanted to do because I've been asking God. I want to be able to give a million dollar tithe. Wow. For real. Wow. You know, you know how much money you got to be making to make to give a, a a tent. You know how much money you got to be making for man. your tent to be a million. Hey, call me Jerry Bus. <laughs> You know why I say that? They call me Jerry Bush. 
real quick. Yeah. Um, when they first hired Shaquille O'Neal, they gave Shaquille a hundred million dollars, and some guys was telling me, "Man, you gonna give somebody a hundred million dollars for playing basketball?" <laughs> and I said, "Man, you bark, you y'all con concentrate on the wrong thing." Yeah, it's the guy who can not they only pay the deal, but pay pay 14 money. other players and mm -hmm. the whole staff. That's why is it that we used to him? I'm watching Jerry Buss on, on that show on HBO. He was staying at the um Playboy Mansion, he was kicking it. He had an idea, he ran with it too. Mm. I my thing is, I said, Lord, with me giving a million, I know I got 10 million. I might even have no. I, I was gonna say I have two million. The Lord said, "Don't you tell that lot." I was gonna say I had two million. Get that one. <laughs> I found myself like Ananias and Sapphire, and I promised that one thing. <laughs> hey, Let's run and get blowed up. Be be sitting over there and just get blowed up. Boom! What happened, hey, Roy? Oh, hey, nigga look, lied. he lied um, to God. He what lied to God. What had happened was. <laughs> he lied to um, God. Um, he lied to God. Reynolds, Bill Reynolds was in a movie called Alive or something like that. It was funny. So he done got way, he was way out in the ocean. And he had been talking about it. he wants to die, but he was way in the ocean and something came to him. So he wanted to live. So he was <laughs> like, he trying to swim to the shore. He way out there. He said, Lord, if you just let me live, I give half everything what I have to help mankind. Yeah. Then the closer he got to that shore, he said, Lord, yeah, Lord. I give. 50%. I'm just going to give you a third. As long as he got to that shore, the, the lesser it went. Yeah, hey, that's man. how it goes, man. Hey, if you have a chance, man, look at Richie King's this evening, this afternoon. Um, it's 4 o'clock four um, clock Pacific Standard Time, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, they be having some knowledge and they keep it 100. I was last, he, he was doing a music show last night and I, he said, oh, wait a minute, I forgot, I got to do this. Like Roy does, what it do, what it do. Now I do it like this, what it do, what it do, what it do. He was like this, <laughs> what it do, what it do. I told him and I that, and, look, and, that, and that and that was his trying to be cool like Roy Anthony was. Hey, man, <laughs> nah, it made me laugh, I was like cool, he's like, what it do. Hey. <laughs> We're going to be back here. How you doing, Look man? Look at Joy. 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 Oh, Joy. oh. Yeah, God, Joy. Joy turned into God. Joy stepped out. Yeah, stepped out. She about to rob somebody and come back <laughs> in and be Joy herself. Hey, man, I'm going to see y'all thirsty. God Peace bless y'all, man. Well, let hey, it's Hank. always good seeing you, Well, let it's always yeah. good to see you, brother Hank, too. Look, she's smiling more, too. Boy, she used to come in with them e wives. Oh, <laughs> Now look at it now, just kicking it. <laughs> All right, y'all. God bless y'all. All right, talk to y'all on Thursday. Peace. Right. Okay. Man. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The